So something I want to talk about today is pretty controversial. I already filmed this once and got too heated. So I'm going to try and keep it calmer and address it in a more sound way that is more receptive to all of you wonderful people. So basically I want to address am I an animal hoarder and I'm going to extend this to our pet YouTubers or anybody who keeps a bunch of pets. Are they animal hoarders? Now just by knowing someone has a lot of pets you can't label them as an animal hoarder and I'll explain why. So a hoarder is someone who collects things to an extent that is obsessive. They can't stop collecting they ruin relationships for it, they lose their jobs over it, they go into bankruptcy over it, they have a lot of times they'll lose their house for it, they are in violation of city codes for it. It literally destroys their lives. It's something that they have to go to counseling and therapy for. It is something that they deal with for their whole lives. And a lot of people don't just collect one type of thing, they collect all kinds of things. But people can collect anything from trash to papers, magazines to cars to food to literally anything. Like a person could have a house full of anything anything and it's just the fact that they're unable to let things go it's an actual disorder it's an actual psychological disorder and so someone who is an actual hoarder has to go through the process of not only just cleaning their house to get rid of everything as you may see in the tv shows they also have to go to lifelong therapy and counseling in order to make sure that they don't hoard things again and typically people who are hoarders it comes from some sort of trauma from either childhood or adulthood a lot of times it'll be like they lost a family member and they just obviously couldn't deal with that loss Loss. and so instead of you know losing more things they kept all of their things that built a barrier around them to protect them from sad things happening from them that sort of thing everyone's story is different so of course I'm just generalizing but it does come from some sort of trauma or some sort of negative life occurrence that's a hoarder what's an animal hoarder an animal hoarder is a hoarder but someone who has a bunch of animals so it literally is the exact same thing as hoarding but just a bunch of animals so I'll use an example of one of the TV shows I saw a few years ago where obviously they feature a different hoarder every episode or like two hoarders per episode something like that I'm gonna talk about two of them so one woman was a cat hoarder and the other one was a rat hoarder so the person who started out with rats I think it was a, a male he had a couple rats, kept them in good conditions, he loved them, he fed them, whatever. And then of course he wanted to get more. And when he got more, he was really irresponsible about it. And of course he housed together males and females and they bred and they bred and they bred and he became overwhelmed and eventually they no longer had cages. He just fed them off the floor. They like left their feces and their urine all over his house. They lived in his walls. He could no longer have a house that rats owned the house. And at that point, he didn't know what to do anymore and he was lost and he was breaking city code by having that many rats. His house was no longer livable. And at that point, law enforcement got involved and then eventually the rats were seized from the home. I don't know what happened to them. I'm sure many of them were euthanized, so it's really irresponsible, really terrible. Hopefully some of them found good homes, but nonetheless, terrible. And that is one hoarding situation. So the other one is where a woman had too many cats. They were also living in her walls, in her home, living all over her refrigerator, all over her mattress. Literally so many cats you couldn't avoid stepping on one. There were litters everywhere, cats were fighting for food and dying, there was disease spreading around just like with the rats, I'm sure there was disease spreading around, there was not enough food to go around in either situation. Really what happened is when people went inside these houses they found dead rats, they found dead baby rats, they found dead kittens, they found dead cats. When addressed with the fact that the animals were dying in their care, these people were horrified because that's how delusional they are about it. They really think that they're doing something okay, that the animals are doing fine in their care and that it hasn't gotten too far, but in reality, it obviously has. And so not only is hoarding like a psychological thing, it's like a delusional psychological thing. It's an actual condition, like I said, that has to be treated like such. You can't just call someone a hoarder if they're not a hoarder and I'll get to that. So I'm gonna give you an example of obsessive compulsive disorder, which is not the same thing as hoarding, and how you would not want to call someone who isn't OCD OCD, but how it happens all the time. So we're going to use Susan as an example. Susan has a closet of clothing, like most Susans, like most women, like most men and women, like most people. And she likes to categorize her clothing by color. So she has all of her reds together, all of her blues together, all of her yellows together, and so on and so forth. 
someone like a friend of hers or a family member may see that and say oh that's OCD that is ignorant that statement is ignorant obsessive compulsive disorder is an actual psychological issue that requires treatment and therapy that requires lifelong therapy just like being a hoarder and to label someone who doesn't have OCD as having OCD has really perpetuated the wrong idea about it for decades. I mean, people, I've literally seen people be like, oh, I'm so OCD because like they like their pencils lined up on their desk. Like, it's not the same. To incorrectly call someone who's not a hoarder a hoarder is basically to label them as a mental illness and to diagnose them without ever having had that diagnosis, without ever having had treatment for it. And so it's really ignorant and really wrong in my opinion. Now, why am I talking about this today? I'll tell you why. I was on Twitter and I saw someone, I'm not gonna name who, call a pet YouTuber, I'm not gonna name a pet YouTuber either, an animal hoarder. And I've seen this before. I've seen pet YouTubers called animal hoarders pretty often, honestly. And every time I see it, it makes me a little bit more frustrated than it did the last time. Every time I see someone in the pet community get called a pet hoarder, I know that I'm just waiting for someone to call me a pet or an animal hoarder, and I'm not gonna appreciate that. I went to school for psychology, I'm very sensitive to mental illness, I have a lot of people in my life that I know who have had mental illness, who have struggled with mental illness, and so I'm very sensitive to someone misdiagnosing someone else. It's very serious business. And so if you're gonna sit on a computer and type, oh, look, an animal hoarder, you're an animal hoarder, and label someone as that, then you should actually understand what it is before you call someone that inaccurately. I have not seen any pet YouTubers who are animal hoarders, although to be fair, I haven't watched that many pet YouTubers because I'm honestly not like a big fan of a lot of them. I only watch a few and there's no tea, no shade. I just didn't actually start out watching any, so. I just don't. I am aware of the criticisms that a lot of larger pet YouTubers face thanks to Twitter. And really, I, I don't think any of them are pet hoarders or animal hoarders. When I see photos of their care, when I see their enclosures, when I see them talk about, oh, taking so-and-so to the vet, none of that happens in a hoarding situation. So let me just talk about, am I an animal hoarder? The answer is no, of course. But um, my animals have a vet. Okay, so if they need a vet, they go to the vet. In a hoarding situation, animals are sick and dying all around and the person thinks nothing's wrong. I can acknowledge when an animal is sick, I can afford to take it to the vet, and I can afford to give it the proper treatment after the vet. Are my animals living in the house? Technically, yes, but not in the walls, know what I'm saying? They're not living in the mattress, they're not pooping and peeing all over the floor, they're not living wild. My animals are not cohabitating with each other and they're not spreading disease around. They're not taking my home and making it unlivable. I'm not breaking any laws. I'm not gonna have the city code come out and tell me that my house is unlivable or that my neighbors don't like what I'm doing. Like all that happens in hoarding situations and none of that is happening here. And none of that is happening in other pet YouTubers homes. Last but not least, all of my animals are cared for individually every single day. I spend hours to make sure that every single animal is properly cared for. So literally by definition there is no way i could be an animal hoarder but that label could be placed upon me and anyone else who keeps more than what two three animals what is considered normal that's something else we have to discuss people like to label anything outside of the norm um as like an odd situation but the norm for a lot of people who keep reptiles is to have a lot of reptiles the norm for people who are pet YouTubers is to have more than one pet. That doesn't have to be that way. Pet YouTubers can just have one pet, but a lot of them like to share the multiple species that they keep. I don't think there's an exact number either, like, oh, at 38 it cuts off and you're a hoarder, because that doesn't make any sense. Because what if you were counting each one of your fish? What if you had a fish tank that had 10 fish? right and then you had a couple dogs like eventually that does, doesn't really make any sense to add up that way what if you have someone who has a bunch of reptiles right which are not as much work as like if you were to have like bunnies oh my god bunnies and guinea pigs are a lot more work than a leopard gecko for example it doesn't add up to the same amount of time it doesn't add up to the same amount of care and also if all the animals are well cared for in the first place you can have someone who is caring for dozens of animals and then you can have someone who's hoarding dozens of animals and it will look very different. So there is no way to just put a number on it and say, oh, at this number, that's too many because it's not appropriate. Another thing I wanna talk about is that when you look at an animal sanctuary, when you look at a rescue, when you look at someone who fosters animals, they don't get labeled as animal hoarding. It's only people who are permanently keeping them. 
right? Um, anyone who is collecting, anyone who is keeping multiple species, anyone who is potentially impulse buying, which we'll get to, because that's an issue that a lot of people tie in with having uh, animal hoarding or whatever. I keep a bunch of special needs or pet only or adopted animals. I feel like I am less likely to be called an animal hoarder than someone who just collects them, but regardless, that's not fair because if I ever am called that one, hello, it's wrong, like I said, and two, a person who has a home for a lot of animals who properly cares for them, like I've said a hundred times, is not hoarding them. Just because one person is adopting or because one person is offering sanctuary to a bunch of different uh, special needs, like I am for example, it doesn't mean that you can label one as hoarding and one as not, or one as collecting and one as hoarding. It's just not fair. Bottom line, if someone is properly caring for all their animals, offering enrichment, food, proper enclosure requirements, and medical care, they're not hoarding. It's not the definition of hoarding. It's ignorant to say otherwise. Now, one issue I do want to address that people often tag along with animal hoarding in the pet community would have to be the idea of impulse buying, which obviously is really horrible. I do not condone impulse buying. It can be really dangerous for a pet YouTuber to impulse buy. And that uh, obviously lets their viewers like think, oh, if that person impulse bought, I can too. And that creates a really dangerous scenario. And of course, I really respect that situation and the level of uh, detriment it can have to an animal and a person. So in no way am I taking that lightly. But it's not the same as animal hoarding. And for some reason, whenever I see a pet YouTuber get called an animal hoarder again i'm not going to name the specific pet youtuber but whenever i see that label placed upon them i also see impulse buy next to it and i don't think that the two are the same i don't think that they should be put in the same category because there are two very different things and they both need to be addressed separately some people will see a person who is potentially impulse buying and say oh what a hoarder look at them they can't control what they're doing and it's not the same, I just want to put that out there, that impulse buying is a dangerous thing and definitely shouldn't be done, but it is not the same as being an animal hoarder, especially if that impulse buy ends up, you know, in a proper enclosure and it has medical care and food and all that stuff. It's still not animal hoarding. While it's not a good thing to do, it's still not animal hoarding. And I always see those two links put together, so I just wanted to address that they are not the same thing and that they shouldn't be correlated, especially if you're going to label someone as an animal hoarder, if you're going to, like, use it as a label or an insult. It's not the same as saying, oh, that person's an impulse buyer of animals. It's just not the same. Hi, this is Editing Jessica coming to you with my morning face. I wanted to address that while editing this video, I realized that, like, I didn't properly explain what I was trying to. I understand why impulse buying is sometimes correlated with hoarding because people who hoard would impulse buy. But also, if you think about the situation of the people who, um, like the cat and rat example that I used earlier, they had animals that were growing due from, like, breeding. Um, but I accept that animal hoarding could come from impulse buying, but at the same time, like I said, it's not the same if the impulse bought animal is receiving proper vet care, proper enclosure, proper food, husbandry, attention, whatever its needs are. If it's receiving proper care, if its needs are being met, then it is not hoarding. However, it may be an impulse buy. Just wanted to make sure I'm being clear enough about that because obviously I don't want to come off as uh, like confusing or anything. So thank you. Goodbye. So that was a long way of saying that I'm not an animal hoarder and the people that you watch on pet YouTube, most of them, I mean, I can't speak for everyone because I don't watch all of them, but uh, most of them are not animal hoarders. And at the end of the day, Think about what you say before you say it, because if you're labeling someone with an actual mental diagnosis, that's wrong. Like, <laughs> you should never force a diagnosis on someone, ever. You should not be like, oh, that's OCD. You should not be like, oh, that's animal hoarding when it's not, or oh, that's hoarding when it's not. One thing to do to take away a stigma against a mental illness is to properly discuss it, not to mislabel it, not to misrepresent it like it has been. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed. I'm so done talking about this. It's been so long now because I filmed this twice. Um, I hope you enjoyed. Leave a comment down below. I'm sure you already have. If you feel negatively or positively, I don't care. I'm interested to see how you feel about this. And also, don't take any guesses at who I was talking about because multiple people have been called animal hoarders and I'm just waiting for it to happen to me because I have more than most. I have 43. That's a lot. But guess what? It's also not animal hoarding. 
it's collecting it's also offering home to animals that need it like ugh. subscribe like leave a comment check the links all that good stuff i'm exhausted mentally and i will see you guys in the next one for hopefully something less controversial and more fun bye